Okay, Grace. Well, we're going to um, get started with our Michael in the house, too, with our official question and answer. And I think, Matt and Sarah, is this our fifth one or our fourth one? I, think I, think I believe it is, yes. yes. Our fifth one. Which um, means we've been doing it more than a year then. Yeah. Because you know, we do them every quarter. Really super cool. Um, and we'll just continue to do them because it's just, as you guys know, that I've joined in before, it's like a lot of really great discussion ensues. And not only does it help you with your yoga practice, but it helps all of us, Matt, Sarah, and myself included, like learn more about yoga, right, in general. Yes. So, and usually we just kick it off, you guys, with whatever question you have and just let it, you know, roll from there. So whoever wants to start with a question, maybe I'll look at you, um, Jody. do you have a question today? Ah, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I have a couple of questions. And my first question is, as I'm doing my first uh, 60 day challenge um, ever. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I've been doing Bikram yoga for about 25 years, not, not, you know, on and off. Um, but I started in San Francisco at Mary Jarvis's studio and, and then I moved to the Bay <laughs> moved to Mich Michelle's studio, moved back into San Jose area and started going to um, Bikram Yoga San Jose. I, I don't know. I, I think I've been here at least 12 or 13 years going to the studio. I'd be curious to know. Um, so it's almost your 19 years in business, but um, my, my, so I'm doing the 60 day challenge. I th I'm on day 30, 35. And um, yeah, so it's been really interesting for, for me, you know, number one, the commitment on a mental level of doing yoga every day. Um, but I, I do do other exercise, like, you know, I work out with weights and I'm a cyclist and, um, and then the yoga is just beautiful for that. But, um, but what I've noticed in the last 35 days is my body just aches. Um, and I, I was just wondering, is that, you know, I've, I just feel like I'll wake, you know, like I'll have a great class and then I'll wake up kind of achy and like, oh man, you know? Um, so I was just wondering, is that normal or is it, you know, I just feel like it's different. I would say it's a good thing. Um, if you're aching, I mean, you know, most common cause for aching when you do something like yoga is that you started to use the body in a manner that it's it's unaccustomed to. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you particularly, you know, so you see it in brand new beginners, but um, if you see it in somebody who's been practicing a while, it's usually a sign that they've started to change their practice. Like maybe you're you're concentrating more, you know, because you're coming every day, so you're you're starting to use your body more naturally, and so you know you, you, you're basically learning how to use the body more completely, and and so those pieces will ache, and it's quite natural, it's quite normal. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's things you can do just to mitigate the discomfort of the ache, but the ache itself is quite natural. You know, it's muscular activity, so extra protein in the diet helps. Um, things like uh, Epsom salt baths that can be very, very soothing for the muscular ache, but it's definitely not a problem at all. It's something that typically happens in teacher training, and they tell us all these things, but halfway through, people start to feel all this stuff, and then they tell you get massage. Um, foot massage, very nice, because yeah. um, that deals with all the uh, meridians, you know. Um, then um, what Matt said, Epsom salt baths, you can rub arnica um, gel if there's something that's mm -hmm. particularly awesome. But it's usually a phase that you're doing, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and your postures from looking at you have um, got more correct. So you're using more correct muscles that mm -hmm. you might not have used or woken up. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> you might not have used before. Um, what is, what is that? Thing, I'll, I'll get the name of that in just a minute. Yes, yeah. that if it's aching, like you say, that I think it's quite normal at this stage in the challenge, mm -hmm. um, doing what every day, and probably you'll come out the other side and feel very freed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, on the 31st day, um, uh, I felt it was just amazing. I had the best yoga practice that I've had, and it felt great the next morning and everything. But, um, but yeah, so that, that was interesting. And then, um, <clears throat> and thank you all. Thank you to the teachers um, that you're correcting me because it really helps. I don't mind it a bit. 
So mm-hmm. please keep continuing to do that for me. I really appreciate it. Um, the, the second question I have is in bow pulling pose. I Oh, my back, I can't get my legs up high enough because oh. my muscles in my back start cramping. Ah, again, yes, quite, again. quite normal. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's your, your, you know, the, the, all the spine, well, I mean, it's the spine strengthening series. So that the purpose of that series is not to build flexibility it, it, in many respects, it's to build strength in the spine. And so you're working the spine. Uh, you're obviously working your thighs as you lift your feet up, but ultimately you're working your spine. So the fact that it's aching or cramping again is is a, is not a bad sign at all. It, it means you know things are happening. Uh, obviously, if you have uh, excessive cramping, um, then you should look at mineral content, particularly um, the like magnesium in right. your diet. Yeah, thank you, bro. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it should it should happen. But you know, I would say I would take issue with one thing you said that you don't get your feet up enough. There is no enough. There's no there's no certain amount that is the right amount or that is is has meet, met the minimum. It all of that posture, all of our postures. It's about trying the right way. So there are some people who can barely lift their thigh off the floor in bow. Uh, and they are trying extremely hard and they're gradually making that connection between their mind and those leg thigh muscles and their thigh kind of tightens and lifts a fraction. And for them, they are absolutely 100% doing the posture. And then there are other people who can lift their thighs up easily and they're really only lifting them at halfway to the extent they could and they're not really trying. So don't, don't measure the amount, you know, certainly don't compare to anybody else. I just like to add- well, no, and all of this is correct. I'd like to, and Michelle, I'd like your opinion on what I'm going to say as well. Um, but, you know, like in full locust, you're using the spine to lift the arms and legs up. Um, in bow, in a sense, you're using the arms and legs to get to lift the spine up. The spine obviously going to contribute, but the spine is getting its extension, its back bend from what the arms and legs are doing. So it might be that you're tightening the spine too much as you go up. Um, and we, I would remind us, any through any of us, or ask another teacher to have a look at you in it. Mm-hmm. And also, you you can be aware of that yourself. What do you think, Michelle? Because you're the expert on this question. Yeah, yeah. Um, first of all, uh, I just want to back up. I everything Matt and Sarah said about you know um, your aches. It is so normal. I mean, congratulations on 35 consecutive days, right? That's so huge. So oh, that's big for me. That's yeah, right. So it's not, in, in for all of you, it's not uncommon. You know, you're using muscles on a regular basis that you probably haven't used before. So I'm not, I'm saying the same thing everybody else had said. So you need to do Epsom salt. I mean, you need to do other things now, right? To, to care for it as you go through this phase. We did a teacher training too. I mean, you want to do those things. That that will help you get you know um, get through this, um, but yeah, you want to nourish those those um, spasms or aches or whatever you know as minor as they might be, but still you're feeling them. You know, Florbo, um, um, you guys have been practicing twenty plus years, and I don't know how many years it took me to finally feel like I could kick my legs up higher in it and it is the kick but um one of the aha moments that i had um and sarah you were alluding to this is is emmy really uh reinforces that your cobra half locust locust um your lower your upper your middle spine are the strengthening and the floor bow is the flexibility Mm -hmm. so you you need to be careful that you're not um um, tensing the muscles when you're kicking it. And sometimes that's a, my aha moment came many, many years later when I realized I was doing that. I was tightening everything. And then that was stopping me from kicking. When you really do, there's a little bit more relaxation in, in that one. Like literally when Matt and Sarah, you hear us all say, kick your legs straight up and look up. Those are the only two things you need to be doing. It isn't anything you don't need to roll yet. I mean, literally it's kicking up and looking up 
and letting mm -hmm. the kick right go up with some relaxation in the back to help kick up but too often right we're so quick to kick and then we look up and we're bringing the body and everything tenses mm -hmm. right so you know, I, I share that with you because maybe the next time you do it, like keep your shoulders down and grab your feet from the outside, wrist straight, all this the prep work, right? And then just slowly, gently, you know, kick your legs straight up. Don't, and then, you know, just slowly start to kick up. And no, you have to notice those moments when you start to, you know, tense up. You know, don't hold your breath. That's why the 80 20 rule, and you know, you want to. Take a deep breath, slowly, gently kick your legs up, and then just little sips of air in and out through the nose is how I sustain until I get in the posture deeper, and then I can breathe normal. Hmm. So, great. I'm just adding, you know, to it. I think A, yeah. the, the, you know, the arnica and all that stuff, and then, you know, and then B, I would in your, your floor bow. Um, you know, Emmy's not the only one who said, remember Ida, we used to always say it's a kind of a combination with, you know, relaxation and the strength, right? So, but good. Yeah, congratulations on, you know, getting into it more and more. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Okay, it looks like we have so bright. Why don't you? Oh, yes. uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, Michelle have two uh, questions. Two might be interrelated, and so I'm going to ask them uh, at the same time. Both of them are really kind of matter question, like from find your feet above that kind of question. I heard about for the practice, like the first year people can make very, very fast progress. And then it will plateau at some point. And then it will take another seven to eight years to get into a much better or breakthrough, something like that. And so I just want you, <laughs> Matt and Sarah and Michelle, you are into practice so many years and just give me a meta perspective on that. And then the second question is on to other possible complementary exercise to big grand yoga. And I know I'm very much into the hot yoga. And so if you recommend one or two things that I can do, that will be complementary to the hot yoga. Thank you. I would say from the first um, point about, you know, the plateauing and, you know, seven to eight years, I would say throw out any idea of time scales. You know, that that's that's completely person to person. And, you know, people can create stories about this and say that there's a particular pattern of X number of years, but that that really is is not remotely relevant. The, the idea of of when you're learning, you expand and then you consolidate your learning and then you expand and you consolidate your learning and then you expand and you consolidate your learning. That's a very normal pattern of your learning, you know, whether it's a physical activity or a mental activity. So it is quite normal to, to make a certain amount of progress and then kind of slow down as you consolidate and really, in, you know, integrate that uh, understanding. Um, and potentially you can plateau but the plateauing, if you get stuck on a plateau, that's because you kind of reach the point where you're not necessarily paying attention to what's in front of you, but what's behind you kind of thing. That's why I think it's so important in the class that, that you stay fresh with the words, like, like every time you hear the instruction, pick up your foot or whatever the instruction is, that you listen to it like you've never heard it before, because there's layer upon layer upon layer of understanding to be found in that um versus you know it's that beginner's mind idea that if you stay with the beginner's mind you won't plateau but you will expand consolidate expand consolidate does that make sense uh, yes it does yeah uh, my answer is going to be a personal one bright that i completely agree with matt the, do the, the stories of being a general thing not correct so don't think that anything that said it's going to apply to you but it did apply to me. <laughs> I totally, I totally plateaued for years. And then I just started, the sluice gates started to open and they still open and it's awesome. And it was, it made all that plateauing worth it. Cause actually I built strength 
for out of flexibility all that time I was plateauing, it was worth it, even though it was frustrating and annoying. It was now I have the good platform for that all this new knowledge to pour in as a te- as a student and then as a teacher I can tell you guys things. So um, yes, for me and ultimately because you know there's a a saying from a Bollywood film: um, it's always a happy happy ending. If it's not a happy ending, it's not the end yet. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it was it's worth it was worth every second yeah. of the plateau. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um what do you think? Yeah, you know, and, and, and maybe these aren't the things you want to hear, Bright, because you'd love to hear us say, Oh, you're three year mark, you're gonna have a breakthrough or whatever, but everybody's everybody's different. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I think the thing one th- one thing you're reminding me of is back in the day, you guys, and maybe you all visited this at some point. You know, there's a part of you that for me it happened where it's the same all the time. And you have to get through that because you know, as Matt was saying, keeping that beginner's mind, there's such depth into what we're saying. And it's so different than any other thing out there. It's almost counterculture because our culture is telling us that we need to, you know, do one thing and then jump into something else and then jump into something else. And we're asking you to just saturate yourself into this same thing over and over again. And your ability to do that is going to open you up into new perspectives. So, right, I think for you in particular, as I watch you practice, um, you just have to stay with the words and do it the right way and know that those breakthrough moments are going to happen for you when they happen. Mary Jarvis used to say, you guys, this goes for all of you, including me. It doesn't matter that I've been practicing so long. I'm still going to have a breakthrough. doesn't matter. But you have to, she used to call it waiting. You wait. You're nourishing something, right? There could be something going on in your body and your mind that you don't even know, but by you being in the posture the right way, using your breathing, paying attention, staying with your concentration, there's something going on for sure. Right. And it's and the great thing about this yoga is it's progressive. It's positive. You're going just, you're going somewhere forward, right? You guys can all count on that. I mean, the yoga is taking you somewhere in a, in a great way, you know, so and uh, that that's the thing I would I would add. And I would I'm 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 saying this to you in an enthusiastic way, Bright, because you'd be excited about it. I mean, you could have a breakthrough tomorrow morning, you know, right? So, you know, but you just gotta stay with it the right way, don't change anything. You gotta you gotta that mind that wants to jump into something different or change it here or complement it with something else, which I wanna answer in a second, you know, those are all things that are in in a way, I'm trying to say this in a, in a, maybe this isn't the right words, but they're distractions to something that is going to, if you stick with it and dive deeper, you like Sarah was saying, there's a reward, a bigger reward, a much bigger reward as a result of being, you know, a master of one instead of a jack of all trades, which is another common thing that, you know, Bikram used to say. And that's true. It's so true. It's with this yoga. That's why, that's why this BYSJ does nothing but this, but this. Right. For many reasons, that being one of them. So my 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 um, uh, my suggestion in terms of complementing this yoga, bright. I think you should read both books. <laughs> That's what I think you should complement it with. I think you should read inspiring things, you know, uh, 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 about yoga. Um, and I think you should take uh, in those days off that you take once in a while. Right. You just you know, you 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 just enjoy life. That, that's all. I don't think there's any other, there's no, you know, no weight training, no, you know, to complement this. It's just staying the course, it's just showing up and then, you know, diving into good material that keeps you going and learning, you know, that's. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can we just uh, address something? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Brian. Yeah, a really, really quick uh, like feedback or comment. And I know, thank you very much for that, Michelle, Matt, and Sarah. I know it's a personal journey. And just for me to learn, to practice, to reflect, and to sometimes surrender. And a great moment I realized is to surrender to win in uh, one post of a thing I relax. And then, oh, I feel so good. I made more progress because I relaxed on that. Okay, I, I'm done. Okay, thank you.
Yeah. Thank you. Can I, we just quickly do Christine's comment because there is a... No, it wasn't Christine. I thought it was Christine. No, Grace. Grace just made a comment. Grace, on the I'm sorry. Time. Yes, Grace. Yeah. So, um, Grace, when you see feel pressure on your knees in bow when you're kicking hard, um, often that happens because you kick back too soon. So kick up first and then kick back which is what the words will tell you as well. So if you listen to those and do it in the, in the right order, often people get that because they kick back prematurely. Yeah. And so, you know, there's that, so, you know, that kicking back is like, you know, trying to, you know, you, imagine you're just starting and the teacher is saying slowly, gently kick up and you kick your leg back like you're trying to straighten your leg as opposed to kicking, lifting your thigh off the floor. So the thigh coming off the floor should be the first action of the leg. Um, the kicking back is just creating tension in that process. It's a secondary part of the activity, not the primary. So as, as Sarah said, if you, if you kick back very, very hard, you put a lot of unnecessary pressure on the knee. So kick up first, which just listen to the words again, when you'll hear the right order and do it that order and, and you hopefully you feel less pressure. Oh, so when I feel the pressure, I should be kicking up more. It's not about kick up more. Yes, yes. exactly. Oh, yes. Okay. I always thought you are <laughs> kicking in two directions. I never thought I never tried to separate up and back. In her, yes. yes, separate. Now. Oh, okay. So Grace, there is a little exercise you can try just at home or, or, you know, before or after the class, there's a little exercise you can try just to get that sense, which is you set up like you're going to do bow, um, but you keep your head and your chest down, keep them absolutely down on the floor and only try to lift your thighs up. Okay. And you just try to lift your thighs up. And in the process of lifting your thighs up, you try to straighten your legs. So you are kicking up and you are kicking back. But you, but if you, you get the sensation, of, like it's a light bulb moment. You get this like, oh, that's kicking up. It's very, very different to kicking back. But but to begin with, we're not related to that. So it's, it's a very good way to get that sensation. And the order and how we teach this process is really important that we actually say to kick back and up before we say to look up. Yes. And so you yes. start with the head down in bow. So the very first action is the thighs coming up before the chest comes up. If you lift your chest up first, you tend to just put weight down into the thighs and then it's very hard to get anywhere from there. When I was a beginner, I used to hear that, I used to think it was a correction, that it was, that it was a, you look up and kick up and then they would shout, look up, kick up, and that the teacher meant you're not doing it, look up. But it is the structure of the posture from the, from the dialogue that you kick first, kick up first, and then look up and kick up again, and then kick back, and then roll forward. So it, if one step, at, you know, one step at a time. It's um, it's not. We're not saying, oh, you're not doing it. You shouldn't. You shouldn't look up to the end of the words. And it's quite quick, but it does allow you that that ability to kick up first and really get into it before you go to the next stage. Um, yeah. then we can move on. I'm just going to add one thing to that. A lot of times, you guys, I think it comes the the um, the wrongdoing, if you will, comes from the setup. Because yeah. when we yeah. ask you to grab your feet, you're already lifting yourself way up. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So think about that. Next time you grab your feet, like keep your you then come back down again. Mm -hmm. Now you now you're already rolled back. Right, so you're gonna fight now. Now you're gonna fight the posture. That's, that's true. And the other thing with that, um, don't you think, Michelle, that the legs have to do something in both this one and bow pose? I see people, some of them yeah. struggle to get the leg, and it's way away from them, or way down on the floor, and they say, well, "I can't do it." But you, they, you could if you, the leg has to meet you halfway. I so, so I, it's I, like, now I understand yes. why we have legs. They're supposed to do something. Oh my god! Otherwise, it's a big struggle, and you will launch backwards, and you might tighten the spine. The leg has got to meet you halfway. Yeah. Well, that's why we do all the postures before floor bow. That's right. <laughs> you got to grab your feet. I mean, standing yeah. bow, right? Think about it. We're asking you to bring your arm out to the side and grab your foot from the inside. We're asking you to like to even go behind and grab your foot. Like already, we're asking you to do something with your leg. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, grabbing your foot. So there's a lot of opening that's happening by the time you get to floor bow to make it easier for you to grab your feet. 
Wait, and you know. quite rightly, the first time, if you haven't done it, the first time you bring your leg, make the leg do half the work, you're going to get a little cramp because the muscle never done it yeah. before. It's yeah. quite normal. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's a good point. Oh, just um, <laughs> yeah. uh, since we're talking about legs, just a, a shameless plug that in the middle of March, we will have a posture clinic on legs. So if, if, if legs are something that troubles you, definitely come along to All that. All these Keep your years, eyes open. you've been putting your own leg. They're putting other people's legs, and now you get to pull your own. That's yeah. like <laughs> it's the perfect time because we all want sexy legs for bikini weather, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't look very good. I just I tried it. It, did, it didn't work for me. <laughs> I, I have a question. Yeah, Jeff. Is, yeah. Hi, yeah. hi, everybody. Great to see hi. everybody here. Yeah. I missed the last one, I think. Um, Michelle, you were talking about the bow. Yeah. And standing. Yeah. And you do have a bit of an upper body twist that yeah. you don't have in the floor, right? So my question is when you're coming down, uh, are the are the hips to stay level, as level as they can, or do they float up a bit, or you're just a facing it's, front, the, the, yeah. the level of the hips? Yeah, it's a right. really, really, really good question, Jeff. Um, mm -hmm. And because a lot of people ask it, but you guys in standing bow pulling pose, we're asking you to do nothing with your hips because everybody is different what we're asking you right is your foot to come up your foot should come up over the top of your head right and wherever your hip is then is where it is got so it you kick straight back right and you got to be be careful right you when you kick straight back so the feedback is the foot over the top of your head not here and not here so you you've got to see it right? And then course correct a little bit by staying with the kick. And if some people's hip is a little bit higher than another, that's fine. But your foot has to be up over the top of your head. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And, and of course, Jeff, you know, in that vein, um, there's an important instruction in, in standing bow pulling in the setup that often gets forgotten when we're busy balancing and stretching and kicking, which is, <laughs> that, you know, start to finish throughout the posture standing leg locked mm. standing leg knee locked so right. that that standing leg it provides the stability all the way up into the hip <clears throat> so that's that's your foundation that's your 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 anchor uh, and when that leg is not really happening then lots of other things can be destabilized and thrown out and everything so um so yes, yeah, so you so give it give yourself a good solid standing locked knee as that foundation, and that will definitely help with the process of doing the posture. I'm I'm just going to add, which is corroborating everything um, what what our teacher says, which is standing hip to knee, standing bow, balancing stick. Don't think about the hips. Don't talk about the hips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also to add to that too, like if you know standing leg is bending, posture hasn't started. Yes. You know, yes. All of, yes. all of, all yes. of those, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I remember, uh, Christine, when you were in Be From Basics, as soon as Matt had you lock the knee, your standing bow, because I was there watching, changed. Your mm -hmm. whole standing bow, your balance, everything. So your standing mm -hmm. leg, yes, you know, plays, you have to lock your leg, otherwise you're not in the posture, but yeah. I think of it as getting the foundation solid first before you build on yes. top. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. also everything proceeds from then you'll start to notice the more you lock it i mean i'm doing i'm playing with this now the more you lock the standing leg the more things that you might think you have to correct come into the right place as michelle was saying in all mm -hmm. three postures yeah mm -hmm. i think you know one of the things that gets get takes a while to 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 internalize is that we use a phrase lock the knee so the word knee is in that but this is a process of contracting everything in the leg so that the whole of the leg including the hip joint everything is strong contracted solid unyielding so you have that that strength that foundation and you know to begin with as a beginner you know just managing to straighten the leg at all is is a success um but that ultimately that process gives you tremendous foundation yeah and the more the standing leg is locked right the more you can kick Yes. Right. Sure. Remember, before sure. standing bow, you know, half moon, padahastasana, and this is another Emmy thing, you know, the padahastasana, uh, hands to feet, right? Mm -hmm. When we're at the end, we're asking you to, you know, eyes open, touch your face, lock the knees, roll forward, lock the knees, last chance, lock the knees. Well, 
right then, right, your legs aren't just straight. You want to lock them because you're getting that nice stretch underneath the back of your hamstring, right? Your hamstrings, which is going to mm-hmm. help you then later standing head to knee and especially standing ball. Right? So the standing leg hamstring has got a lot of work to do to help you kick. So does that mean uh, on Parahastasana that you want to, at the end, straighten the knees, even though they come away from the chest? Um, no. no, body has to stay language. That's the challenge. How do you stay sandwiched like a Japanese sandwich and straighten yes. your legs and lock your knees? No, there should, and that's be, the process. There should be no locking the knees with the body away from the legs. Thank you. So you're trying. Okay. That's what I thought. That's what I was going by. You're learning technique, which is very important. You learn all kinds of things in it, and you, you watch yourself as you do it. But you know, but but ultimately, if you've got there, straight legs is not mm. sufficient. To lock the knees. Mm. Right, right. Great. Yeah, thanks. you got. You got to keep. You can never sacrifice form. Good. So Good. You I just want to make sure that form yeah. had to be held. Yeah, which yeah. is what yeah. I thought. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Practice. yeah, yeah. And then the it's last. It's tempting, though, isn't it? I had to do that posture without grabbing um, in a different class, and. It was so tempting to bring my body away from the legs. Mm-hmm. And I, it doesn't tempt me when I'm grabbing because I can do it. But just as soon as I got rid of that, I got rid of that. It was, oh, my God, I, I know what people are going through now. It was really good because it was so tempting. I just wanted to lock my knees. And mm. I, couldn't, I couldn't do it honestly, keeping the body on the legs. There was just that little bit, you know, that I had to keep. But that's, that was all right because I was doing it the right way. I was getting all the benefits. So I do get it. But it's, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah, it's a good challenge to have because the more you open up the hamstrings, right, the more you loosen up then the lower spine. I mean, it changes the everything. Freedom that happens. Yeah. yeah. Changes yeah. everything. I notice. Yeah. Yeah. That's really important information, too, because I, um, a, t- 10 years ago, I did not lock my knees in the posture after the uh, balancing stick. I don't, I don't know the name of it. Yeah. But yeah. Well, yeah. I did not lock my knees and I pulled my hamstring. Uh, yes. Yes. It is, yes. You know, I mean, it's these little things that you really do have to pay attention to. And I'm mm-hmm. still um, in the posture you guys were just talking about, Pada Hastasana, I think the Japanese sandwich. That's it. Um, I think uh, I still am babying that hamstring. I'm still nursing that hamstring from that injury. I mean, because I was trying to touch my head to the floor and I pulled and pulled and pulled on my legs, but I wasn't, my legs weren't locked. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is a, (laughs) it didn't go so well. Do you guys mind if I ask you a question or is, or do you have a list going or? Oh, no, no, you can't ask any questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no questions today. Yeah, I just no want to make sure today. I'm not uh, butting in on someone else's time. Well, let, uh, hang, on, hang on one second. Jeff, are you done with your question? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay. So, Christine, Perfect. I just want to comment. Um, you know, I pulled both my hamstrings, you guys, years and years and years and years and years ago. Both, okay, not at the same time. It took forever, Christine. Yeah. Uh, but because I was diligent and made sure that I healed it the right way, I swear to God, both my legs, I think, are better. No. <laughs> I'm not saying go out and injure yourself and then heal better. <laughs> don't, don't do that, please. But I am I saying, Christine, <clears throat> you have to be patient, Yeah. right? And you have to do the yoga. Yeah. I kid you not. You've got to get in there and you got to work it really slow. You have to use the heat. You. Well, that's so funny because that's why I'm here, uh, because that's my question. Um, I have been doing a home studio because of Omicron and I work in a public school and I don't want to bring it into your studio and I don't want to, you know, mix. Right. So until the Omicron surge has passed, I I just feel like it's the right thing for me to do the yoga in the home studio. But uh, I have an oil heater and I have a other heater and I have a ceiling heater, <clears throat> but it's not getting hot enough. And it's, I just am not satisfied. You know, <clears throat> I mean, the heat really <clears throat> does help me go into the places I want to go. Like the juiciness of the posture, you know, is really in the heat. 
And I was wondering if you guys could recommend a heater that goes above 85. I, I can, I could certainly uh, send you some pointers, some Amazon links to some heaters that we've used successfully. Oh, that'd be um, great. Yeah, I mean, typically the you know one point five kilowatt or five thousand BTU heaters that that don't have a, a low thermal cutout, um, <laughs> but ultimately your room, it, it, the insulation of your room is probably the most dominant. That and the size of the room are the most dominant factors in there. I would say about the heaters though is you can practice in a room that's seventy degrees or colder. It's perfectly possible to do that, and I think you know with the legs and the hamstrings, the the hamstring is not. You know, sometimes we use this phrase stretching because it's kind of translated from from um, the teachings in India. But in West, that word stretching sometimes gets misconstrued like we stretch elastic bands. You're not trying to do that. That that would, would destroy your body. It, it, it's just not a healthy thing to do. And in fact, you see ballerinas who've done exercises like that and they've lengthened their Ooh. ligaments. And later in life, they have a lot of problems because of that. That's not what we're doing. Your leg, the muscles in your leg were uniquely designed over millions of years to do their job very, very well. So they work in pairs typically. So the front muscles and the back muscles, I mean, being simplistic about it, the front and the back muscles on the leg of the thigh muscles, they work together. So if you don't lock your knees in that forward bend, you're just tugging on your hamstrings, but the hamstrings are doing their job of tightening right. And then you're working against that. So then you're creating a sort of dysfunctional uh, wrestling match in your own body versus when you contract your front thigh muscles, your hamstrings go, oh, they're working. It's my time to That's just let go a little bit and loosen up. So, mm -hmm. so all of the instruction we give has that wisdom, if you like, encoded in the instructions that we give for the class. But actually you're locking the knees using the thigh muscles is very, very important, especially in forward bends. You see it in Pashmodasana and the standing separate leg stretching and in a whole, whole bunch of other places. So often when you're struggling with something like that that seems tight, often the answer isn't to do less of that, it's to do more of something else. So you have to sort of ask yourself, if I'm stuck, what's missing in the posture? What is it that I should be adding to the posture to make everything work? And so in this case, it would be thigh, thigh muscle contraction, locking the knee. And, and then you, when you do that, there's this like, you'll see like suddenly, whoa, yeah. like you'll feel everything in your body shift possibly just a couple of millimeters, but you'll feel the shift and it'll feel right. It'll, it'll feel natural and healthy, no matter what your particular range of motion is on that given day. Yeah. That's why it doesn't really matter if your room is not so hot. In fact, if anything, it might be a little bit of a blessing because it would give you a little bit more opportunity to pay more subtle attention to these particular issues that are concerning you. Okay, great. That I like that answer. That that really works for me. The second question I have is the camera. I would like to do a camera, but I'm not sure you can see my. So I'm trying to devise a way to get the camera like on the wall so you can see in the interactive classes. Um, does it? Is it? Do you have any recommend? What works for you on the other side? Like what would what would be do. You, you know what, no. Neil, you could probably, I mean, I love that you're trying really hard to find the proper place, but I'll tell you what, you just put that camera somewhere that we can see you and not worry about it. You know? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And in fact, I love that you're bringing this up, Christine, because I've seen you in my class and I've seen the camera off. We'd love, we would prefer to see you. Yeah. So Even though you can't see the whole, like it might just yeah. be my shoulders or... <laughs> I'm in the bathroom. Okay. I'm in the ba I'm in my bathroom yes. and yeah. yes. and I could so I can heat it. Yeah. Even so if the camera's at a funny angle, sometimes like there can be discrepancies, but I will often check and say, look, I think your hands are too far forward in Cobra, for example. But because of the camera, you're gonna have to use your judgment as well. So, you know, try bring in the try, do are they peeking part of your shoulders? If they are, bring them back. Because sometimes it's correct what I see and sometimes it's not. Yeah. But for the most part, we're seeing the right things and yeah. we often will check if we think it's the camera, you know. One thing you can do if you look at my view right now, I'm gonna switch cameras so you see this is a camera view i use if i'm practicing in the room 
And all I've achieved there is I just have a, a tripod, you know, a very inexpensive tripod from Amazon. And it was like 25 bucks or something. It was it was nothing special. Um, okay. But, you know, it has three different stages of lift on it. You can tilt it a little bit. So I just set it up in the corner, tip it around a little bit. You know, what I found with cameras in the room in terms of practicing to give the teacher a better view is if the camera is more at waist height, Okay. That's kind of better because well, okay. if it's too high up, then it, you get this bubbling okay. effect on the camera, which distorts the relationships of things. And, and then the teacher keeps yelling at you and standing head to knee, leg down, leg down, yes, leg down, yes. because your looks yes. like it's way up in the air when it isn't, yes. it's horizontal or, or vice versa or that's whatever. True. But, but you know, it, that, that would be the only thing. I, I don't think we've really seen a pattern. You know, I think everybody has their own unique yeah. way to set things up. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank so you guys. I, I say, appreciate that. Well, you're welcome. If one thing I would say, just in case anyone's watching this who is a beginner to it, what what you can see in your camera is what we can see. Yeah. So that's a way of judging whether it, you know yeah. if you can see what you want us to see, then we can see exactly what you can see. So <laughs> that's the way of judging that. Um, well, I'm going to give I'm it a gonna... try this next week and hope. Good, good, work. good. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad. Good. And Matt, when you, I, I think I have the same tripod. It's just the, it's just your camera phone. Your your phone your camera on your phone. Right? Well, I use the phone as the camera, but yeah. but but the tripod is just a, a very boring yeah. tripod that designed really to hold phones, but you can unscrew and screw in cameras if you want. But I use it to hold my phone acting as a camera, but but there's nothing special about the tripod. It's not it's not like an expensive photography tripod. It's 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 just a cheapo thing, but it does the job. Yeah, and I'm saying Christine, just use your phone. Yeah, it's what yeah, we're right. using. Just use yeah. your phone. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm going to, I'm going to give it a go this, uh, go round and see what happens and then let me know. Christine, do you have a humidifier in your bathroom or just the heaters? I do. I have a, I have my little incense, um, you know, my, cause I do like, yeah, the bubbler, the little. Is it making humidity for you? Yeah, it, it is. And I, I turn on the shower. I take a shower. Right. I was going to say, some people like to do that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I take a shower and then I get ready and then, um, I'm trying to make 5.30 work. Just <laughs> give it in a go. My body doesn't really want to move at 5.30, but I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. Time-wise, it works best. Yeah, so Neil put in the comments that there is a technology that some, a couple of our students <laughs> have called Yoga Dome, which is basically this inflatable. So you need a lot of space to do it, but it's an inflatable mini yoga room. And, and, and you put the heater inside it and you, it creates this little little space that, that that is quite small and well insulated and you can heat it up pretty nicely. Is it so that, loud? That, that's also an option. Hmm? Is the dome loud? Is it I don't know. I think it's loud when it's inflating, but I don't know how loud it is once it's running. Um, yeah. I, I do teach this one but... student I teach regularly yes. who, who practices in it like all the time. Okay. Um, she likes it. Yeah. If you're on at 5.30, Christine, and Younger is on, that's her uh -huh. name, ask her about it. Have a chat with oh, her. Because um, people have varying opinions, but she yeah. seems to love some it. Some people love it. Some yeah. people hate it. You know, the same yeah, you know, sure. personal preference. I wouldn't it. want it to be loud. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. You have another right. question? Uh, Michelle, may I add something info for Christine? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, in addition to the camera, another thing uh, we can think about is the lighting. And the lighting is very, very important. Even we have a not so optimal camera, but then we have a good lighting. And so it will kind of, everything's kind of lighting up. And you can see my face. It's a really well lit. And so you might heard about theater three points lighting so we have a main light here 45 degree and then i have another light here which is kind of secondary light so i okay, light up my face my body very very well so the third point is if we have a background light we'll be eliminating my shadow mm. and what you can do is you can have two major lights out there, one is 45 degree, very, very bright. The other is kind of a little dimmer on this way. And then so your entire face and body will be much easier to uh, for the teachers to see. And oh. so that's about the lighting. Yeah. yeah. 
I can confirm that I could see you perfectly yeah. when you passed yeah. the other day. Yeah. yeah, it's working for you. <laughs> so, so, yes, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for that knowledge. Right, that's helpful. Mm. You know, as we keep doing our online classes. Speaking of seeing somebody online all the time, is Miss Vivian? How are you? Good to see you. Do you have a, a question for us today? Um, I don't particularly have any questions. I just want to say hi because I was unable to get to the studio. I see these people online all the time. It's just great to be able to uh, connect with you guys, even though I'm not in town. Yeah, just want to say hi. Thank you. I really appreciate the Zoom classes. And I try to do it every day. I sign up for the 60 day. In wow. fact, I've been doing it for over a year daily Wonderful. since, uh, since wow. December so since January 2021 60 day wow. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. so anyway this has become a daily routine I really yeah. do appreciate it that's awesome that's and awesome. then allow me to go from places to places right I'm, I'm in Canada right now I used to be in Tennessee a couple of weeks ago oh, wow so you know I was unable to get back to the Bay Area probably for another couple of months um, but you see me at different time zone. So I, I, I'm not going to do the 5.30 classes anymore. It's too early for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm doing the 9.15. The 9.15, really? you know. Yeah, but but we, I don't get to see you. That was like streaming, right? Yeah. So, But it's all right. I'm there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see Jeff. I see Neil. I see all these people. So, hi. Just want to say that. Yeah. Hi. And even on the Zoom classes, right, you hear the teacher saying, Jeff. Do this, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you get to see their face. Right? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I try to um, be on video, even though it's streaming, because just for me, right? For myself yes. to see myself and help me to focus. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If, I, if I'm behind a camera, I might be doing something else. Right? <laughs> yeah. I just be accountable for myself. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I've liked it too to keep the camera on when I'm practicing. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, it does keep down. you accountable. Yes, it? it's, it's, it's been about. Yeah. I, I totally agree. When the camera, you see off. yourself. It's not for somebody else. It's for yourself. That's it. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I, I just want to say thank you. Oh, thanks, Vivian. Yeah, it's lovely to see you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is lovely. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. You know, I just, I just want to be part of this one. Just be connected. I don't want to be forgotten. <laughs> I'm still here. Oh. Oh, you're you're yes. not you're not at all, Vivian. Been yeah. around way too long. We, Alana came back today, by the way. So yes, the, yeah, Thursday yeah. she came back, okay. and then this a lot of people. Day. A lot yeah. of people went back to the studio, right? So, yeah, yes. yeah. It's getting yes. warmer now. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. All right. Okay. Thank you, Vivian. And okay, I'm going to be myself. You guys continue. Okay. So I've, so I've been practicing. Um, uh, at least for Bikram Yoga, I've been practicing online for most of two years now, um, but I found uh, uh, I was able to go to the studio for a week in early January, and I practiced uh, every day for a week um, in the studio. And um, even though like, I'm amazed um, how well um, the instructors can, can catch the things I do on video, I'm, I'm really amazed. Um, but I found uh, the you know the way my camera is uh, my feet are are not um, I think my feet are not visible in the in the standing series so it um, when I actually went into the studio I got a few corrections um, that were um, very very helpful and I got them pretty much right away um, mm-hmm. in, in 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 pretty much the first class uh, about you know uh, I was not positioning my I was I was not positioning my right heel out in the uh, awkward uh, was one example. Um, so I tried to pay attention to those things, and it wasn't just one instructor that noticed it. it was I actually was reminded a few times until I, uh, you know, kind of like remembered and um, uh, internalized it. Um, but but I found that just that one week. Uh, in the studio made a huge difference, not only in the, in the, um, you know, in just catching those things, but also psychologically in feeling a greater connection to the studio or reminding myself of the connection to the studio since I had practiced in the studio, uh, you know, many, many times in the past. 
uh, on on visits to the Bay Area. Um, so um, and you know now I'm doing the 60 day challenge online. So it's the first time that I've ever done the 60 day challenge just doing only Bikram for you know for for um, 60 days. Um, although doing yoga every day is you know something I've been doing for years. Um, so um, one one question that I had um, was for uh, half tortoise. Uh, I know that when I, um, uh, you know, when I uh, kind of lock my arms and I go down, that I'm supposed to go down, you know, kind of smoothly and not have a jerky motion. Uh, and one way to do that, you know, is by really sucking my stomach in uh, very hard. And then as, you know, Sarah always reminds us, um, you know, n not like, uh, trying to focus on the result of having my forehead touch the floor, but rather, you know, keeping my spine in the right position. And if the forehead eventually touches the floor at some point, you know, given the, given the right form, then that's great, but not to force that as a result. So, um, so I do find some, so I'm not focused on my forehead touching the floor. Cause I know that's the, if it comes, it comes. Um, but, but I am a little concerned. I I find it hard to keep my stomach stomach sucked in enough so that I can avoid that kind of jerky motion at the end. So so what happens is my hands will come down and I'm trying to come down very very smoothly and evenly. But then at some point, you know my my hands just kind of drop and hit the floor. Uh, and then I move them forward to just try to get my my. Um, you know, little fingers on the floor and, and not have the heel of my hand on the floor. Um, so I'm kind of going forward a bit, uh, but at the end, it's hard after I've gone forward to just come straight up without another jerky motion. You did, so, it, uh, you did it the other day. Mm -hmm. I saw you do it. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to stretch um, forward. But I have one for you, which oh. is, um, you know, rather than coming down with the goal of putting the hands, um, exactly what the words are saying. If this is a problem, before the hands drop, already allow yourself to put the fingertips on the floor and then come forward by sliding the hands, creeping the hands forward, keeping the hips on the heels. So does that make sense? So you come down, come down, you're trying to do exactly what I'm saying. And then at some point the hands drop. But instead of doing that, you can come down to where before they drop and put the fingertips. It's a slightly different approach which from which you'll learn the other yeah. the 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 um, more orthodox way, um, and then creep the fingertips forward, keeping the hips on the heels. For you particularly, Neil, the 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 jerkiness is quite normal, but it's also a telling sign that that to come down in that posture, keeping your hips on your heels, which is part of the instruction in the setup, involves a relationship between your thigh muscles and your abdominal muscles. I mean, it, there's more involved, but those two key groups. So the two are working together to bring you down in stability. And yours don't work so well together. You see it in Pashimoto Asana uh, and standing separate leg stretching, where sometimes one gets jammed and stuck, and then the other one wants to do something, but they're not necessarily working together in a nice seamless kind of way. So I would say don't be don't be too concerned that there's jerkiness, but just when you reach a jerky point, just pause, mm -hmm. pause, and just feel what what has to happen to find the next easing down a little bit because you're trying to build a, a neurological relationship between those two pieces that your thighs should be pulling your hips down into the floor at the same time as your abdomen's pulling back to give you stability and when the two move together the motion will be smooth yes um and and but it, it, it again that's that's a result of, of of trying to keep your hips down as you come down in a nice stable with fashion with the spine relaxed yeah with and when you, relaxed. when that starts to happen for you it'll happen in many postures you'll start to see it happen in Pashmata right. asana exactly. standing leg separated stretching you'll see it in um padahastasana you'll see it in a bunch yeah. of places and yeah. I was like, and I the more more upper thigh 
more upper thigh going down into the floor in that posture. So feel that relationship, not just that you're sucking your stomach in, but you're sucking your thighs in as well, if that makes sense. It's the same, like Matt said, from the other postures, Pashmas, and exactly what he said. Well, I want to yeah. add something about the jerking. If you end up jerking, this is not a problem. If you deliberately make a technique which involves jerking, this is getting in the way of the practice. Yeah. So it's not a problem if it happens incidentally because the, not the connection yet. But it, if you think, all right, now I'm going to jerk upwards and do it deliberately, th that yeah. that would be yeah. changing the, the, yeah, the technique. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's not deliberate because I know I'm not supposed to do it and I've gotten feedback that I shouldn't be doing it, which, mm -hmm. you know, kind of confirmed that. Um, mm -hmm. But... It, yeah, but but it's kind of interesting because the three postures that we, you know that were just mentioned, those are you know the the same three that I had questions about today, and and, and it's and it's all um, uh, yeah it 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 makes sense that they would um, you know that they would all be related. Um, so so one thing that I found myself doing is um, in the half tortoise when I go forward. Um, when I come out of half tortoise, uh, I, I feel like I don't have the strength to just come up directly, you know, without some sort of a jerky motion. So I've kind of sl been sliding my hands back a little bit, of, of course, still, you know, trying to keep my, my um, you know, uh, hip, uh, uh, thighs on my stomach and, and, and my hips down and, and all that. So I find that I kind of slide my hands back a little bit and then I can come up smoothly. But I'm but I, I somehow feel like that's not quite the right technique to be using. Same thing. It's the same thing. The thighs down. The the uppermost thigh. So like if I took a towel and I wrapped it around here, like right, right. where your legs meet your hip. If I pulled a towel there and I pulled it down and back, that would, would naturally cause your body to fold. That's what you're doing on the way down, and it's what you're also doing on the way up. Um, and and so you you so then when they're all connected, then you suddenly you have a lot more power and you feel much more capable of being able to lift up. But when they're disconnected, it, it you can get to a point where you just feel powerless, like you've got no power to lift up at that point. For some people, so what I said, that's the opposite of what that's coming out the opposite way. What I suggested you went in. If it's teaching you something, if as you do that, either what I suggested or you bring that you slide back again to come up, if it's teaching you what to do with that part of the body, it's it's okay. So if you as you as you slide forward with the, on the hands, that you, that you if you feel the hips come down, that's what happens to some people when they do that. And if you yeah, feel I, how to I, come up as you do that, if you start to notice what's what works differently when you do that than when you come up without doing it. If it's teaching you to do the posture, it's valuable. It, it does actually, I, I am trying to do that because I'm very focused on keeping the hips down because I mm. know that's like a fundamental part of the posture. So, so when I'm kind of like sliding the hands forward and backward, I am like remembering to keep my hips down and it, it, does, it does help me um, if I slide my hands back, it does help me to come up smoothly. Mm. Does the speed make any difference, Neil? Going slower or faster? Uh, sure. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Uh, which yeah, which because, one lets you be smoother? Slower? Um, slower because because then you're not really rushing. Cheating. You know, you're 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 able to focus. <laughs> you're not cheating. Well, you gotta go. You gotta go. I just want to add, I want to acknowledge, go ahead, Vivian, you have something. Yeah, add. I, you know what, I want to, I want to put some comment on that, that, that posture, because that is one of my favorite, I used to think that was a child's pose, but I'm interesting. Yeah, it's active um, child's pose. Right, yeah. exactly. Anyway, and that is a really good pose, posture for your app as well. I feel my app get worked out every time I do that thing. Um, the way that I'm trying to avoid this jerking thing that you talk about is I focusing not have my hand touching the the mat first. I make sure that I have my forehead touching. Is that correct? The forehead no. touching the no. mat. No. And this is like supposed the forehead, to the, for, the, the the posture the posture is um 
is a it has a lot to do with the shoulders or the the, the shoulder right, blades but, but you're not you're not the, using the hand to support yeah but the yourself, head right? the, the head supposedly, dropping the head touching yeah so vivian the head touching the floor right. is the result of stretching the arms forward it's, right, it's but not you're not putting head, you're just like little, it's little an effect that happens touching the thing yeah well for me um when i'm trying to do the jerking thing is that i lift my arm slightly higher i want to make sure that my head touches first before my pinky finger touches it so that way the arm is actually smooth down to the ground and i don't have like a separate motion for the head and the and the arm they're like one piece is that yeah, yeah but that's that wouldn't be how we would teach it vivian that yeah that, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what you're what, what you're triggering by by trying to do it that way for you personally given your body and what you can do what you're triggering is more emphasis in your body and your deep down in your thighs and your abdomen so you that forces you to use more thighs and more abdomen to keep your butt down uh, because you're right. trying to get your head down but we would never teach it that yeah. way um, um, that's that's very specific to an individual person's uh, range of motion and so on. Yeah, I was going to say that exactly. The range of motion that you're working with, Vivian, is is different than Neil. Yes. It's different than all of us. So everyone's different. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I have to. I just want to acknowledge. Right? I think um, half tortoise is probably one of the most underrated postures in terms of. Um, getting to do it uh, correctly. I think it's a very, 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 very challenging posture. And Neil, you're, you're not alone. As Matt no. and Sarah have said there, it, I have found most people, right, including myself on most days, you know, to go down smooth and up smooth is hard. Most of us have a, you know, a rounded spine, but you got to remember, right, as Matt and Sarah always emphasize, right, is like just doing it the right way. So the hips have to be on the heel. So you're, you are 100% doing it the right way. And for you to be so tuned in and want to do it smoothly, you know, that's great. Just keep going, right, the right way. One of the other things that I think will help, and this goes for all of you and myself in my own practice, is how many times in the dialogue do we say, come down from the lower spine? You don't come down from the waist, you come down from the lower spine. So just like Matt is emphasizing, how many times do we even say, keep your stomach sucked in? It starts with even standing deep breathing to really start to engage that idea, right? That you come down, in, even in Padahastasana, come down from your lower spine. We come down from the lower spine and you keep your stomach in. So by the time you're in half tortoise, your body is, is getting used to coming down from the lower spine. And you guys, I don't think that we use our abdominal muscles enough in our practice. You got to use your abdominal muscles. So there's an instruction right before you come down stomach well he says stomach in exhale breathing what i actually do is exhale breathing stomach in <laughs> it's like the same thing but a stomach in so right before you right before you come down stomach in don't forget that part mm. Mm. yeah and, right um, so all the yeah. postures before right standing head yeah. to knee right your your stomach in and just coming down from the lower spine coming all of those are helping you you know to that that point you just got to keep going neil knowing that all the other postures are going to help you open up more to do this one which is challenging in a seated yeah. position where we're asking you to keep your hips on your heels <clears throat> you know but you're getting the benefit just by doing it so it's so this one's really powerful for tightness in your inner shoulders and your neck which can cause all kinds of issues and lots and lots of us most of the population have some kind of tightness in that area of the body because of the way we we sit we drive we do computers and and so on um so that touching your forehead to the floor is not something you should be straining to do it's not an action of yeah. straining i've got to get my head down to the floor that would do exactly the opposite of what the posture is trying to do the posture is trying to create the relaxation by asking you to stretch your arms forward and touch the mirror um, so that the scapula the shoulder blades start to move forward 
and create some space between the shoulder blades for the spine to relax and the trapezius to relax and the neck muscles to relax. And in their relaxing, they drop down towards the floor. Mm -hmm. And that's part of that process that we talked to about the relaxation effect of increasing blood flow into the brain stem. When the relaxation is there, then the blood flows better. And there's this tremendous sense of relaxation that can be generated. And so it's a, it's a really cool thing. Like if you've got really rigid inner, inner shoulder muscles here, if you do that posture really effectively, you can get to the point where after you've done it a few times, that this inner shoulder is like putty. It's like completely let go and completely relaxed. And so a lot of people have tension, migraines and so on because they hold tightness there. But it is yeah. really important. Don't try and force your head to the floor. That's not yeah. healthy at all. Yeah, and I can emphasize another piece because Matt's got this out now, which, um, which I'm always um, making a fuss about. But... Um, stretch your arms towards the ceiling so hips on the heels and stretch the arms towards yeah. the ceiling so the arms is not the spine you mm. can leave the spine to its own devices keep the hips on the heels and stretch the arms when you tighten the back that makes it especially as a beginner impossible to come down with the hips on the heels so the arms so the shoulder blades scapulae coming out of the body eventually is the relaxed shoulders and then the benefits to it, what we talk about, the blood flow going to the brain, because it can. Mm. The heart muscle stretching, which Bikram said in a seminar that Michelle went to, I found that very instructive. Yeah. So, yes, you have to be able to have enough relaxation that those shoulder blades can come out to get those benefits. To and stretch the, the arms, not the spine. Mm. Yeah, and you really mm. want to be in it. You want to hold that posture for a while, mm. right, to allow, I mean, you're, you know, you're using the floor to help you right too mm. it's a prop to help yeah. there was a gal you guys um years and years and years ago in the um in the, the second studio she used to dislocate her shoulder like a common like all the time yeah. and one time she did it during class it was the most disgusting thing i've ever seen oh. if you've seen a shoulder dislocate and uh immediately went into half tortoise and got her shoulder back in place. Yeah. <laughs> she, would use, she would say this, this posture really helps to strengthen my shoulder and bring it back into oh, yeah. you know, alignment. So, yes. um, plus yeah. think about it. It is and Diane Ducharme would say this, right? We're preparing the shoulders for camel. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that you can grab your heels, yes. right? You know, too, and it can help you tomorrow, the next day, because you're doing camel, that same action is going to help you grab your feet and floor ball. Yes. It's all related. Yes. You just keep, yes. you keep know. Going. Are you going around like that made me think, you know, rinse and repeat the washing. You, you look like yeah. a washing machine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Rally used to say, right? Travel around the world. Around yeah. The world yeah. Yes. With your spine. So. Uh, we do have some questions that, you know, were written in. Um, but and Ling is here with us, so maybe we do hers. I okay, just noticed Perfect. Her. Yeah. perfect. Uh, Lynn, do you want to come on or I'm, I'm happy to read it? I can just, I can just read it. She's got a beautiful Thank flower. you, Michelle. Yeah, you can do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank no problem. You. Nice to have your pretty flower there and have you Thank with you. us today. Um, she put here, I would like to know the benefits of each Bikram yoga pose. I'm going to address that in a second for you. I usually hear from Bikram yoga instructors, it helps for the immune system as performing the head to toes pose, wondering how it works as stretching the muscles outside and, and impacting the inside organs. I meant to learn all the physiology of each posture to me, understanding or know, then knowing the benefits of them could improve uh, my practice. So um, there might be more to this, Lynn, but one of the things I want to share with you, Lynn, as well as all of you, is our new website now. If you go to, um, I believe it's, uh, of course, Bikram Yoga San Jose, but I believe, Michael, it's under postures. It's under about. If you go under the about menu and it's, there's Bikram Yoga under there. Yeah, so the about, and is it under the about? The posture, yeah. Michael? Yeah, there's Bikram there. Yoga. Yeah, about Bikram Yoga. About so Bikram Yoga. About. Yeah. So you go there, Bikram Yoga San Jose, go to about Bikram Yoga, and you will see all of the postures. Um, each posture 
you know, including like, you know, half moon, right side, left side, back bend. And it will give a list of the, um, the more dominant, the more, um, um, the bigger benefits, you know, cause all of them have so many that it would be too long to list them all. But, you know, the bigger benefits that maybe you're looking for Lynn and all of you, right? Cause it is nice to know. And then on the blog, we have separate articles for each posture that go more in depth about benefits. So you can first try about Bikram yoga, and then you could search on the blog for that posture as well. And then also in the studio, then yes, I guess you've already got them. We have two books by Bikram, um, which give you uh, physical benefits of each posture and also techniques, you know, so that he, you can actually learn from him in the blue book how to do the posture things, you, you know, just you can, you can I, I learned to do locust when I was a beginner because I couldn't get my legs up and I bought the book and he says, um, it's very normal you can't get your legs up and immediately I could because I was reassured. So that was as a beginner, but even at this stage, there's lots of details about the physiological benefits and about the techniques. And then the orange book, he goes into some of the benefits yeah. of, on, a, on what, you're, what you're asking about and then on a bigger scale as well. So lots of sources. Uh, Michael, we, the, the uh, blog, the search, they could search the posture. And are these the ones that Matt did on BYSJ everywhere? Is that what you're? Um, they're older, so I don't okay. know oh, wow. who originated okay. them, but okay. yeah. yeah, they're older. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. So yes, Aline um, and everybody on, on BYSJ everywhere, the Facebook group, if you search for hashtag BYSJ Asana, um, you will find a whole slew of posts, uh, as well as one index post that links to all the others um, on every single posture. And there's information in the post as well as pictures. But then if you look in the commentary on the posts, there's many of them, you know, ended up with fairly extensive backwards and forwards and additional questions. So it's quite a little gem of a resource of uh, um, because we had not just our, all our own teachers, but we had teachers from around the world who also participated in those conversations. So it was, it was quite an interesting little exercise. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, so if you just do hash BYSJ Asana, that you'll find it in Facebook. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for asking that because we were talking about that earlier that maybe not a lot of, and this is being recorded, that you can go on the uh, website now and look for, you know, kind of a general idea of the benefits, then dig into the blog and then now go into BYSJ everywhere. So there's a wealth of information that is easily you can find easily it now too. So do you have another question though, Lynn, in specific pose? Yeah, I had another question. I think I have been asking Sarah before, but I keep practice, but you know, the head to toe. So when I I had to um bend my head, right? And bend down, bend down, bend down. But I don't think my head would uh touch to the knee. Sometimes it's down mean. through the chin. Which it might not. Pachimottanasana. Okay. Pachimottanasana. So um, Ling and I have been talking about that. Um, you don't, in that one, although we shout it about many other postures, there's no forehead on the knee. The forehead is always the head. You're always trying to stretch towards the feet. And yes, you might not touch, but you have to try to, because the trying to touch the head to the feet allows you to stretch the spine to the full extent that you can stretch it. And some, you might surprise yourself as the technique develops more, it might, but it might be that it doesn't. And there's a story that is not mine from Jim, Jim Callett about a world champion called Kei Ha, who his proportions didn't allow him to touch his head to his feet. But when um, he did such a perfect posture, which such perfect stri spine stretching that when Jim was the judge, he gave him 10 out of 10, which is very unusual, but he would never have touched his head to his feet. So don't worry about it. It's a goal. It's not like a, you have a goal to be emperor of the world, but you've got to take steps that give you benefits before you get there. In, even you don't get to be emperor of the world, you're going to benefit on the way. So always trying to touch the head to the feet, not the knees. It's a good question though and i get i get why you want to do that because it feels like you've done it but you haven't <laughs> it's also a very good posture to try again at home 
um, you know, maybe after you've, the day you've practiced when you're already a little loosened and just try that posture very slowly over a long period of time. Let's just constantly breathing and taking up the slack mm -hmm. and stretching a bit more and taking a few breaths and just keeping repeating that process. You know, I was in a workshop, um, different style of yoga, but basically we're doing the same posture where, you know, at the beginning of it, I was cold and I could grab my toes and I could, could get my body down a little bit, but I couldn't reach beyond my toes. And then they had us take a block. Let me just get this. And so I, then after a minute, I had to put a block in front of my feet and then grab the edge of the block. And I was just about able to do it. And then they had to stay in there for a minute doing that. And then a second block in front of the first block. And, and, and I, and I, you know, and to me, I was a stiff person. I mean, like it, it was, if somebody had said to me, you'll be able to do that today. I would have just said, you're kidding. You're lying. It's just a wishful thinking. It's, it's never going to happen. And yet it happened. So there's always more that's there. And the breath is a very powerful tool to help you explore that process. Um, most of that process is about letting go. It's about understanding what has to release and relax to allow you to continue to stretch forward. The one thing is a tip from our teacher, which works, you know, I, we, I talk a lot about you have to walk the hips back until the legs are straight, lock mm. the knees, but you can lock your knees. But even so, as you go into it, you can pull and walk the knees, walk the hips back again. And that gets you that stretches your spine. It's a little tip for doing what Matt said. Um, you can do that in the class or you can do it, especially if you're doing it at home longer or after class. The knee's going to bend a little bit, walk back again. They bend a little bit, walk back again. Yeah. And then you'll see the spine learns to stretch more. Yeah. But it, and even that walking back, that process goes back to what we were talking about with Neil earlier, that each thigh hip that you walk back you are learning in that moment to connect the thigh muscles the abdominal muscles thigh muscles abdominals left right left right you're building a, a memory a connection of those muscle groups because they're going to be extremely important once you're in the full expression of the posture yeah and once again right you're pulling from the lower spine it's another one in a horizontal position mm -hmm. you know you don't have necessarily as much gravity to help you as you do the you know hands to feet but by the it's by the end of class right you've warmed up enough that you've literally have come down from the lower spine so many times right it's the same action you know pulling forward my my add to this is the end of that posture when we ask you to keep pulling you know lynn you just need to make sure that you're in all of us right we're in the right form you have to be in the right form and those last few seconds of every posture, in particular that one, you know, you just take it nice and slow and exhale whatever air you have in you. And you just think your spine is sliding right towards your toes. Yes. But, you have, but you have to do all that work prior to make sure you're in the posture the right way. Take your time, right? Follow through on the actions with the dialogue the right way. And those last few seconds are, are is going to be opening up whatever area is tight for you to maybe one day get there where your forehead will touch your feet. But I don't, I don't yeah. know if they, they ever will, but that's, I count on, I count on that in the dialogue with the teacher. I count on all of those words so that at the very end, if I know I'm set up, right, that is my moment. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to just exhale more and I am pulling and I feel my shoulders behind me, my elbows behind me, and my spine is just going right, even if it's invisible, right? But I feel it. How do you actually verify um, to yourself that you're um, pulling from your lower spine? Because I know the instructor can see whether I'm doing it or not, but it's hard for me to um uh verify it to myself so is there any sort of method for me to verify to myself that i'm pulling from the lower spine just to really rephrase it you're not pulling from the lower spine you're stretching you from the lower spine down oh, from the lower sorry spine. stretching from the lower spine yeah, yeah. you're pulling yeah. the arm yes so yeah. basically if you feel any tension or tightness there then you're not you're doing the wrong thing you know, there should be a yielding happening there, not a tightening happening there. And so what often happens is beginners tighten 
and then they're stuck and they've got nowhere to go. You, the, the stretching is the opposite of that. It's, it's the releasing or lengthening. Anyway, right. any uh, hi everyone. Hi Marie. The yeah. key, the key is to feel, to be in touch with the body. Even we can do the posture totally, a hundred percent wonderful. The key is to be in touch, feeling, breathing, body, mind. Yeah, but but sometimes what you feel is not. I, I don't necessarily buy that all the way, Maria. I'm not one of those that's been a big fan of of you'll feel it because sometimes you're feeling the wrong thing and you think it's the right thing Matt, do you, Matt or Sarah do you mind um showing but reality oh. is is reality and yeah. reality is showing you that you are not in the 100 percent wonderful perfection or on the on the track you are you are trying to right right and i'm not disagreeing with you I, I i hear i totally hear what you're saying i matt do you, and sarah do you think you could show um Pashimotanasana, just that side view of what it is to come down from the lower spine i think this is a good visual Shall I do it because I'm stiffer, or do you want Sarah to do it because she's more flexible? <laughs> uh, whichever visual where you can actually see either one of you, you see that you're coming down from the lower spine versus kind of falling. Both do it. You can see your different bodies do yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Because it is so, you know, I love that you brought it up again um, because it's it's asked of us many times in the class in different uh, ways so, yeah, i have a hard time feeling this uh, one myself yeah yeah uh, but and and you know you just got to try the right way maria's kind of you know michael right so okay all right why chin forward look forward lock your knees and come down see how they're coming down from the lower spine do you see that now see how sarah can already get so close to her thighs that's what you're aiming for right but see look at matt keep his uh, his chin is still forward but he's still coming down from the lower spine even though his body's a little bit further away from his thighs you guys see that can you guys manage doing it the wrong way? <laughs> I, I certainly can. <laughs> I, I don't I know if you're doing, right. doing it the wrong way. And, but yeah. so this, is, this is me. So this might be particularly helpful for, say, Neil. So like, I'm going to try and not use my upper thigh muscles. So you say, come down. That's it. My knees are slightly bent. I'm kind of exaggerating. My knees are slightly bent. I'm more bound, I'm rounding here. Uh, it's harder to reach my feet. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, but how do I get from there to the main posture? Right. It's roll the weight forward. So see, he corrected it. But do you see he didn't need to do all that correction if he came down the right way? Can you do it again, Matt, and come down the right way? The right way. The right way. Come down the right way. Okay. You guys nod your heads if you're seeing this. Do you understand? You're starting to see it? Okay. See how he's coming down from the lower spine. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right? See? And then, yeah. And then he keeps his chin forward, grabs the sides of the feet or around his heels, and then he pulls. The flat back, isn't that? The dialogue position, the coccyx, the toes, coccyx, the void, the coccyx, that the lower spine starts here. Yeah. Number spine. Yeah. Yeah. Here. yeah. Yes. Yes. So Sarah, yeah, that's a really important point. Sarah, Sarah, can you do it now? Can you do it from the lower spine? Let's just see you do it. Isn't the sign that the back is flat? Not curved? Well, I, yeah, I don't know. I put emphasis on that. Uh, Jeff, just, you know, yeah. Sarah said, see how Sarah came down now for her, right? Her goal for to touch the toes, she's got to keep her shoulders up, her elbows out. Roll back just a skosh there, Sarah. 
Yep, contract the thighs and then see how her spine is eventually perpendicular to the floor forward on the floor. Okay, now come up out from the lower spine, from the lower spine. So you reverse out of it. And this requires a lot of abdominal work and use of those thighs. What a great yeah. visual. Did you guys, did that help you guys to see that? Yeah. Aren't you inspired now to go do a 430 class? Can you just do one more thing, Sarah? I just want to show one thing. Uh, I'm going to do it using my sweat here, so it's not quite right. But it is something we were talking with Neil about. So, so Neil, if I if I had you here at the studio, I could do this with you, which is, you see, I, I've got, imagine this is a towel. That's the best I've got right now. But for you, I would put it, you know, where I was describing earlier, and I would pull it back as you stretched forward. I'm sorry to get you that sensation that that's what your legs should be doing, your thighs should be doing. They should be pulling back as the abdomen contracts, as you uh, come forward. Uh, so you're stretching. From, remember the lower spine for Sarah is like deep down in the coccyx. It's not, not, the, not the lumbar. So it, you know, it, it's something you can play around with when you've got somebody to help you um, to get that sensation, or you can do it against a strap. If you're in a place that has straps against walls, you can do it that way as well. Matt, that could you that describe? Doesn't mean, that doesn't mean it's easy, Neil, you guys, right? But now you, no, have, no, no. Right? Yeah. Now you have the idea. You have the idea, right? Which is what, using the visual and the intention is the way we, is how we start. And those yeah. things about that, it's like, I, I kind of always have in my head, it's amazing WD-40 for your hips. Yeah. That Sorry, right. Jeff, you were saying? Maybe um, you could possibly describe it as keeping the crease low. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. I mean, you're, you're literally trying to deepen and open up that, that hip crease where the leg and the, and the pelvis meet together. Mm -hmm. that, that, you know, it's a more subtle point that we don't teach the point specifically in the beginner class, but that as you contract, the muscles should be vacating the space. So they should be creating space in that hip crease. And so in a workshop, you might have somebody, you know, again, we don't do this in the beginner series, but literally you can push your fingers right up into that crease and your muscles should be retreating from your fingertips to create the space in the joint. So you're really, you know, you're really learning how to use those hip joints in a very, very healthy uh, way um, by doing some fairly simple postures. Um, but it takes a while to build the sensitivity, the feeling, the understanding uh, of all of this. Which is why, the, going back to our initial point, right, which is why the repetition of the same thing every day. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, makes sense. Um, you got Maria, uh, we have two minutes, you guys, and I still have um, a couple of questions. I do want to honor the timing, though, right, the 2 to 3.30, and we'll have these again. And maybe what we do, Matt, Sarah, is we can answer these questions and send it to Barb. And, yes. And, uh, right, and res respect that. So, um, but because you guys showed up, is there any, you know, real quick, brief question? You know, Maria, you came on. It was nice. It's nice to see you. And you had a quick question at all? No, it's fine for me. It's fine for me. I'm. I am fine. Thank okay. you. Okay. Sorry because I I came in so late, but I couldn't have the passcode. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, it's nice to have you here with us, Maria. And thanks again. Thank, thanks. Well, yeah. Thanks. Well, you know, join us again because we'll do them. We'll do them again. So. I have one, Michelle. Yeah. Last one. So you mentioned about mindset or um, uh, in the two books. Are those the two Bikram books you were talking about? Was that the, is that what you were referring yeah. to? The very beginning? The books, yes. Yes. You said, I mean, obviously it's, it's a practice, but, you know, it's a mindset as well, right? And a reflection of ourselves, self-realization. Yeah. And you, you, you mentioned, you know, just making sure that we're, you know, we're taking in that time to, to do that self-realization. And that's part of the practice. Actually, the self-realization, right, is just to come in and do the steps of where you're using the body to, you know, um, and become more self-realized. 
So it's the, it's the heightening of your concentration, heightening of your determination, you know, your willpower, all those things we say, your patience, your faith. So your path to self-realization comes as a result of coming in and showing up and doing the steps the right way. And um, you will find your own through that, exactly as Michelle yeah. says. And if you want a little bit of context, the orange book or gold, as it now is, the mm. hardback one, he, he will tell you, he'll give you some context to plant seeds. The one that was in, I have one of them. It, it's the one with him in um, um, Registry. Registry. Yeah. That's the previous one that tells you more about the postures and the physical benefits. That's the, um, yeah. that's the blue book. The other one, the hardback one in the studio, is the is one I'm talking about. It's, it used to be orange, so it's called the orange book. It's now gold, but it's the same book. Mm. That's okay. the one that gives you lots of context. What okay. you're talking about. Just planting seeds is still going to be yours by your practice, you know. Yeah, but. yeah I'm rereading that too. In fact, it's Matt and Sarah's book that they lent me. <laughs> Thank you. I have to need that. But uh, there's a there's a whole chapter in there on living yoga, and it's 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 called living yoga. So you'll, uh, yeah, pick it up, Jody, because it will. If you're hungry for that, it it will address mm-hmm. more of that, right? Using the Bikram practice. But yeah, that's the, that's the, you know, this is the means to that end for us to each individually self-realize. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. All and just right. a, a, another reminder as we wrap up, don't forget we have uh, a workshop coming up in the middle of March on legs. <laughs> legs? There'll we'll, we'll, we'll be more information coming in due course. Yeah, March 12th. What, what time again, Matt? 12.30 to 2.30? Is that what I it is? I believe it is 12.30 to 2.30. And if you've ever wondered why you had these things on the bottom of your torso, then we'll try and answer that question. <laughs> and it does include both, right? Both legs? It both uh, yes, both. You see, yes. but, but it, we only charge you for one of the legs. The other one just is a free bonus. You know, <laughs> for a while. I like that. Two for one. But eventually, you know, when you get really good at using your legs, you really only need one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one leg like a cobra. Yeah. Hop around all day and let the other one rest and then try the other one and let the other one. Yeah. You guys yeah. are funny. All yeah. right, you guys, we'll look for the recording of this um, and look for another one of these in the next, you know, like, you know, I don't know, eight, nine weeks or so. And um, yeah, the posture clinic too. And then, yeah. Thanks, Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you so much, much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Peace out. Thank you. Later. Thank you, guys.